Hi everyone, this is Phoebe from the Bug Snag team. This video is part of a series of demo videos on the alerting and workflow engine. If you'd like to watch other videos in the series, I'll put a link to the playlist at the end. In this video, we'll cover how to use the alerting and workflow engine to customize your notifications for new errors introduced. So now I'll pass it over to Yvonne, our solutions engineer, who will walk you through that. Awesome. So kicking it off with this very first use case that I think is going to be something that's familiar to a lot of the audience. And that's the use case of focusing in on a release where you're ramping up adoption across your user base and you want to know when errors have been introduced, when there's a new root cause to an error. Bugsnag does a great job of identifying that today. And that's visible in the releases dashboard by looking at the errors introduced section. So we have this release that we deployed five hours ago. There are some errors, but none that have been introduced and that's a pretty good indicator. But because we can't be held to continue to refresh this page and look in the errors introduced section, we wanna create some automations around this so that there's less manual effort on a release manager side or whichever engineer is on rotational duty. So to do that, I'll jump into the inbox and I'll highlight something that I think goes a bit underutilized. So to create a search that basically reproduces the behavior that you were seeing in the releases dashboard, I can go to the search bar, I can toggle to errors introduced in, and then just select the latest release and that's gonna remain true uh, for subsequent releases and I'll apply that search. We don't expect any results because we saw that that version doesn't have any errors that have been introduced. Um, but I've already gone ahead and created a bookmark for this. It's called errors introduced in last release. But I wanna show you the two different places where you can create a bookmark. So you have the option in this top right corner or on the bottom left. And when you select that option, you can either, you can give the bookmark a name, you can set it as your default view for the project, and you can share that bookmark with your team, which is definitely something that you'll want to do if you plan to use a bookmark in combination with the alerting and workflow engine. So once that bookmark's created, which we have here, the next step is to go into the project settings and scroll to the integration section, which is something new. Uh, so folks who have been using Bugsnag uh, will have noticed that this is a bit of a change in the user interface. And this is where you can configure team notifications, issue trackers, incident management, and data forwarding integrations. So we'll go ahead and configure this Slack integration that I've created that's pointing to this errors introduced and latest release channel. So here, I wanna stay focused on this given use case. So we're talking about errors introduced as part of our last release. So what I wanna be notified about is just when a new error occurs. This is gonna be a big change from what you've seen when configuring notifications in Bugsnag before. So when you select one of these triggers, that then gives you the option to select basic filters where you can set uh, criteria based on release stage, based on error type, severity, or status. Or you can use the advanced filter option, which I'm personally the most excited about. Um, being able to say and set criteria in the inbox, create a bookmark, and then have that populate these advanced filters, I think is gonna be really useful to a lot of teams. So in this case, we're gonna select the bookmark that we've created for errors introduced in last release and save that. That should now be sending notifications to Slack when a new error is introduced, and we'll do something similar for Jira. So I'll jump into the Jira configuration, and you'll see that this is already enabled, and it's enabled to create an issue for each new error. And before there wasn't any filter ability here, we would just always create a new issue for each new error, and that can lead to a bit too much of backlog, too many uh, Jira tickets being created. Now you can be much more targeted by using things like the basic filters and the advanced filters. So I'll save that. And then my next step will be to navigate over to Slack. And what I'll do is I'll trigger an error that we haven't seen before. And this application is running the newest version. So when I trigger an error in shopping cart, which we haven't seen, I'll see that errors introduced in latest release 
becomes emboldened when I navigate to that, I have information about that error. I can easily navigate to a bug snag from here. That then gives me all of the error details that I need. And the other thing that I see is that in this top left side, you see that a linked issue has already been created. So I can click this. I'm automatically just navigating to the corresponding JIRA issue that's been created by our integration. And this has some information about that error. And I can go ahead and start identifying the root cause and creating a pull request and patching this issue. Um, so this is some of that like thoughtfulness that we want you to put into bookmarks and create some seamless interactions between Bugsnag and your third-party ecosystem.